People who work at wedding venues, what's the most disastrous wedding you've seen? Once I saw the entire bridal party, bride and groom included, being forcibly removed by police officers just minutes before the reception was about to start. They got crap faced and insisted they were allowed to freely roam the historical, state funded, highly protected building next door to the reception hall. Employees did all they could to quietly usher them back but they started swinging and the cops had to be called. That would make for some awesome candid reception photos. 20 years later, they'll be showing these to their kids, and here's where we all got arrested for trespassing, drunk and disorderly, and assault. Welp, I'll toss this one in. I worked a wedding as a planner's assistant when I was about 18. I did whatever I was asked, but for the most part it was final touches on setup, organizing the bridal party, cueing music and stuff. Anyway, one wedding starts off normal enough, it's huge and being held in a university chapel, with a reception to follow outdoors next to a historic building on campus. The bride and groom each have 14 people in their bridal parties so already wrangling everyone is an issue. The day before the wedding we show up for rehearsal and set up what we can. It's a gorgeous June day, everything is fine. We manage to get everyone up and down the aisle in order, all good. Day of the wedding. Horrifying thunderstorms. Before the wedding even starts, the tent that had been set up the day before flooded. Whole place turned into a mudslide. Ceremony is gorgeous. Then everyone makes their way in torrential rain to the mud-filled tent from heck, where the water and mud is easily ankle-deep everywhere, sinking to calf-deep depending upon where you step. The bride's dress is absolutely ruined. Everyone is damp and covered with mud. The bride's mom looks like the matchmaker from Milan. Somehow, the band is still there and willing to play, and the only dry place is the dance floor. So everyone is there and it's 900 degrees to go along with the torrential rain. The bride changes dresses and asserts that her cowboy boots are made for this crap so the wedding goes on. Everyone gets hammered. They all seem to somehow be having a good time. Meanwhile, the rain is steadily picking up. An epic storm is brewing. And the planner that I worked for was like okay time to piece the frick out. We pile into her car. Everything is wet and terrible and I'm just thinking about getting home and showering and never seeing those lunatics without a rain contingency again. And, less than a mile from the wedding site, three separate funnel clouds form, touching the ground to become three. That pretty much ended any and all festivities. Luckily, I'm pretty sure the bride and groom were just happy to be married to each other but holy crap did the weather have it the frick out for them. That sounds like a badass bride and wedding. The groom was rushing the celebrant because he only had to pay half price for his tux if he returned it by 4pm. The reception was a hot buffet. The guests all stuffed their faces and even their handbags with food and then fricked off. The ceremony and reception all took place in under 15 minutes, happiest day of their lives. The reception was a hot buffet. The guests all stuffed their faces and even their handbags with food and then fricked off. The ceremony and reception all took place in under 15 minutes. You just described my dream wedding. Alright, I've got a doozy but might be a bit late to the party. I used to bartend at a restaurant that did a lot of small functions, like engagement parties and receptions. To set the scene, this was a fairly small affair. About 40-50 guests, some food platters and a shitload of booze. It was fairly uneventful for the most part, until the night was just about to wrap up. At about 1am, everyone was pretty wasted and were partying hard. One of my colleagues informed me that someone was fricking in the disabled toilets. This has happened a few times at these types of events, and I rolled my eyes when I heard this. As it's not exactly the most private place to smash some drunken dandy. The disabled toilets are essentially in between the men's and ladies. Which means that the air vents basically broadcast the not exactly quiet couplings of wasted party goers. Another important note is that the door for this toilet is a sliding door with a latch. Which is the possibility of being open enough for those wandering through to catch a glance if the door wasn't slid all the way closed. I did a glass collection run about 5 minutes later, and sure enough, the door wasn't really closed properly. What I saw through the crack of that infidelitous portal made me back away like Homer Simpson when he caught Apu. 
clear as day, the groom had the maid of honor bent over and was absolutely going to town. I made my way back to the manager's office and looked him dead in the eye and said, crap's gonna get real bad in a minute. Confused, he followed me back out on the floor, and with impeccable timing, one of the party members was whispering in the bride's ear, he's freaking who she screamed. The bride's father overheard the exchange and ran to the toilets, dragging his brand new son-in-law directly onto the dance floor. The bride started crying hysterically as it was confirmed what had just happened, and she ran off into the night, trailed by her wedding party. Everyone else kind of milled about for 15 or so minutes, drained their drinks and filtered out themselves. We found the groom about 3 hours later as we were packing up the bar, head in the toilet, vomiting his guts out, a bottle of whiskey in one hand. I was waiting for the father of the bride started beating groom up on the dance floor. I didn't work at a venue but I did work for a dive rescue team. Wedding was on the side of the river. Father of the bride was not pleased with his new son-in-law. Fop went for a drunken walk along the river. We found him three days later downstream. Pretty sure that put a damper on the wedding. I too worked dive rescue. Never understood why it wasn't just called dive recovery. Crap was always dead. Nothing will wake you up faster than a dead bloated face in 3 feet of this at the bottom of a freaking lake. My first time I think I sucked half my tank down in 20 or 30 seconds. You never totally get used to that crap. Not disastrous, but definitely the most awkward. I bartended the wedding venue in town. Most the time it's simple and the people are ordinary. The last wedding of last year we worked was by far the weirdest group of people I had ever witnessed. Imagine a room full of 200 people that were probably outcasts in high school and had never been to a party before. They are all dressed to the nines, but with like canes and fedoras. And you can tell not a single one of these people can dance. At one point, there were four guys doing the worm. Four, and not even together. They were just in their own little group of people dancing, unaware that another three guys were also doing the worm. Okay, I cracked up reading this. That's such a great mental image. Videographer here. The bride was the product of an affair so her father's family and mother's family were always separated her entire life, until the wedding. And it was very tense from the minute I arrived and culminated in one family member attacking another with a steak knife. Nothing brings family together like steak knife murder I guess. Not a disaster, but I worked at an Indian wedding of 1200 people. People showed up who weren't invited so we didn't have enough tables. Women changed their baby's diapers on the table and left them there. We ran out of plates, buffet style, because everyone took like 3 or 4 plates for themselves. It was crazy. This was actually my wedding. The, no ex. Wife's family was a lot overbearing. My family is a lot racist. Best option available to us was to elope. We decide on a country with a scenic harbor front and plan a sunset wedding in the park. The photographer shows up and is a super friendly dude. Takes a ton of shots. We wrap up and the guests arrive. But only the guests. The officiant is a little late. Then, a lot late. No answer on her mobile. We all wait about 45 minutes or so with no response. Finally, we dispatch some guests to a church nearby to see if there's anyone there who might be able to fill in. On the way to the church, the search party sees a random well-dressed woman standing in a parking lot. Yep, it's our officiant. With her mobile phone sitting in the car showing a dozen missed calls. Whatever. They bring her down to the waterfront to perform the ceremony. Except sunset had long passed, and it's very dark. We had written our own ceremony, but there's not enough light for her to read it. No worries, she had 15 years experience doing this, just do your usual ceremony, then. Nope, she didn't even know a simple one. But one of our guests plus one was a huge fan of American greaser culture and had come to the wedding in jeans and a white t-shirt with a pack of smokes rolled up in his sleeve. With the ciggies came, a lighter. Our wedding was literally saved by the fonds. He was promoted to the wedding party and lit up next to the officiant. Of course, holding a cigarette lighter while it's burning tends to get a bit hot, so we would have periodic breaks in the short ceremony where everyone was plunged into darkness for a few seconds while Fon switched hands. Since we were waterfront and had an open flame, we started to attract a cloud of bugs. 
Sensing a free wedding buffet, the bugs attracted bats. Giant freaking bats swooping down on the wedding party. We wrapped up quick and noped on out of there. The reception was a quick toast, followed by a seafood platter that was unfortunately too large to fit in anyone's refrigerator, resulting in the bride, and one assumes other guests, we didn't ask. Spending the entire wedding night locked in the bathroom while their insides fought to GTF fought to G and that photographer who took all those shots, I meant that literally, dude was drunk off his butt, but pretty good at hiding it, couldn't hide his work, though, we had 16 rolls of film, and got them developed back in the US, only one picture worked, the bride and I holding hands where only our hands were visible in the frame, every, single, other, short was either out of focus, had heads cut off, was only one of us or part of one of us and all of the other, or just our asses. It was amazing how the dude couldn't get more than one good photo out of hundreds of attempts. It was still better than dealing with our families. Sounds like some pretty hilarious memories if nothing else. Sad that it had to be your wedding, though. I work on the radio, years ago another guy I worked with used to DJ weddings on the side. I needed some cash and he wanted some time off so I sat in for him. The bride's dad had died a few months prior. Although her parents had been divorced she wasn't close to her stepfather. So her dad's brother was standing in for him. I got told about a half hour before she and her uncle were going to do their version of daddy daughter dance. They asked for me to come up with a song that wasn't about her dad. Wasn't a love song. I couldn't think of anything. Heck, I still can't think of something else that would be appropriate. I went with a song I hadn't seen the video to, Craig Morgan's Almost Home. Apparently the video was a guy committing suicide. The groom came up to complain shortly afterwards a little upset, as he'd seen the video. I asked him what song he'd rather me play, and he immediately cooled off. He realized I was in a tough position and didn't have a lot of options. The mother of the bride then got drunk and demanded the chicken dance. Why not isn't she lovely by Stevie Wonder. Was written as a song to his daughter. But the lyrics are really just about how great the girl is so works in all context. My mom's brother-in-law and cousin got in a crazy fist fight. Inted of my mom showing us a dress for great memories she can also show us cousin Mike's blood on the side of it. I hope you reuse the dress with bloodstains left intact. That would be a badass bride. Reception is all set up. Guests and groom have arrived. But the bride and her maids are missing. They appear about an hour later. Pee out of their goods. Reception commences. Bride continues drinking as though her life is ending. End of night about 2 in the morning. Guests have left and the families are cleaning up. The bride is sitting on a chair covered in her own vomit. Semi-conscious. And the mob turns to the groom and says cheerfully, you can take your bride home the groom says, no, in a tone so filled with disgust I wish I could have bottled it to sell to angry people, and left, it was awkward. Other favorites, learned never to ask where the groom is, we were at the ceremony getting ready for the processional and usually the groom does not walk the bride down the aisle, only to be told that the barely legal stud walking what looked to be his grandmother down the aisle was in fact the groom. Awkward again. There was the Russian H wedding as well. There was some confusion as the bride was wearing as my boss called it a pea shoot wedding gown. And people who were bringing their children in for theater school complained. So we had to move the wedding so people couldn't see the bride in all her glory. Awkward again. But perhaps my favorite was a result of the interaction between a bridesmaid and our security guard at the time. Bridesmaid walks and starts being exceptionally rude to the security guard. He hadn't said anything to her and apparently didn't know her. It wasn't until she passed him that he recognized her full back to two. He was an boss man. He could have fricked a headless corpse with abandon just as long as it had a nice butt. He had gotten her pregnant and disappeared when she asked for child support. Even more awkward. I'm so interested in the back to two bridesmaid and security guard. I worked a wedding once where the groom was Hindu and the bride was Catholic. For some reason, the couple decided to have roast beef on their menu. As we began to serve the beef, you could hear the Hindu side gasp in disbelief as we placed large platters of beef on their tables and they then yelled for us to remove them immediately. I guess the bride must have forgotten that she was marrying into a religion where cows are sacred. To make matters worse, as this was happening, the Catholic side began clinking their forks, 
a tradition that occurs to at some weddings and insinuates either the bride and groom or parents of the couple to kiss. This time it was meant for the parents of the groom who did not believe in showing public affection, especially in a room full of their relatives. Despite their hesitation, the clinking continued and got louder and louder until the poor parents had to very briefly and embarrassingly engage in a quick embrace in order to subdue the Catholic side of the family. Here's to hoping the rest of their lives did not clash as much as the two cultures did on this wedding day. I've said this before but I was handing food out a Taco Bell window and a carload of Indus pulled up. The guy marking the food messed up and put beef tacos in the bag when they ordered chicken. They were not pleased when they came back around to get the order corrected. Years ago, my wife designed planned a wedding for a huge wedding at the Four Seasons in Santa Barbara. Beautiful venue, huge guest list, and not many expenses were spared, especially the alcohol. Both families were big tequila drinkers, so instead of the champagne toast it was turned into a tequila toast, which then turned into more people making speeches toasts aka more shots. Needless to say, around an hour after the first toast, everyone was toasted. The groom starts fighting with his now brother-in-law and then a big drunk sloppy brawl commences in the front lawn at the dang four seasons. LOL. Stick to champagne for the toasts, folks. The mother-son dance went on for like 7 minutes and had 3 songs woven together. The mother had changed into a backless ballroom dance gown for this number and spent much of those 7 minutes shimmying up and down her newly married so. I guess this got her worked up enough to bang one of the caterers out in her car while the horse d'oeuvre were being passed out. That was classy. More like W d'oeuvre. A friend of mine from university was getting married. She was early 20s very pretty and an elegant. He was 30, high school dropout working as a carpenter. They met through their church and decided not to be alone together before marriage because of their strong religious beliefs. The groom seemed nice enough, but the bride was well educated and wanted adventure and travel. He didn't see the point of traveling and had no appetite for change or adventure. He had rented the house next door to his parents at 18 and been there since. In my honest opinion. She was so far out of his league that they were playing different sports. Her investment banker father felt the same. Because they didn't support the union, her parents refused to help pay for the wedding and the groom's parents refused because they were broke. And it was the bride's family's responsibility anyways. So off we go to the not going to be one of them fancy $5,000 weddings. Groom's words. The wedding was at a campground resort in the middle of nowhere. One hour outdoor ceremony at noon. Reception started at 5pm. Everyone in attendance ended up leaving the silent cocktail hour space with its one tray of fruit, one tray of veggies and various bottles of pop and water in favor of the bar. Each pair of parents sat in a different corner buying plates of appetizers for their friends and family. There was a bit of a ruckus when the groom's parents, who don't believe drinking is a sin, started ordering pitchers of beer. The bride's family, who do think drinking is a sin, took offense to this. I for one, sat back at the bar, cold beer in hand and watched the tensions and embarrassment rise. Highlights from the dinner reception. A girl at my table was uncomfortable with the fact that they had their first kiss in front of everyone. Kissing should be reserved for in private. The buffet ran out of food. The cake was too hot and melted collapsed in on itself. The father of the bride's speech basically amounted to we raised this amazing girl and kept her a virgin until tonight, someone please make her a better offer before she leaves with this man. Half the guests left after dinner because they did not realize there was a reception. The bride and groom did not dance or interact all night. The groom's grandmother stood at the back of the dance floor scowling and making comments about how people danced and what they were wearing. The bride and groom snuck off out the side door at 9pm and the DJ told the 10 of us that were left that he would play until 10, if we wanted. If shockingly, the groom decided that he did not like married life and just walked out within 2 years. Not sure if this counts since I wasn't an employee but the groom at the wedding. Our caterer was arrested while on his way to deliver the food to our reception. Apparently the driver our caterer used had a warrant for his arrest and the police pulled up next to him when he was coming to the reception hall. They obviously arrested him and seized the truck full of our delicious Mexican food, my choice of food for the wedding since my wife got to choose pretty much everything else. The owner found out while we were still at the ceremony and had to bail out the truck. 
He then showed up to the reception in his work t-shirt with a couple other employees he could scrounge up and they started cooking the food at the reception hall about 45 minutes after everyone had already arrived and was seated. Thankfully the owner was cool enough to try and make things work despite the setback and we chose a pretty easy food to make for our wedding. Tacos and enchiladas. We didn't learn until after the reception what had happened. We just thought it was a little odd the owner was there and not dressed up at all. But it was our wedding day so we didn't care much. Good on the owner for being so professional. Middle aged couple. Second marriage for both of them. Daytime Sunday wedding at the very nice country club I worked at as a banquet waitress. They had picked out their menu months prior. But the day before the wedding the bride calls to say she's all of a sudden deathly allergic to gluten and needs special food, a special cake, etc. My managers are freaking out bc apparently this allergy is airborne and she will die if she is in the same room as gluten. They tell me this and I call bull, explaining what celiac disease actually is. They accommodate her as best they can anyways. We took allergies very seriously and never took a chance with anything. They brought their own decorations which consisted of rusting aluminum trash cans placed at the entrances with signs and little banners they spray painted saying leave your drama at the door. Throw it in the trash or drama free zone. A Halloween type skeleton bride and groom were hung up behind their table as well as a shrine to the bride sister who had died over 10 years before. I understand missing your sister, but setting up candles, a large photo, and taking up a decent amount of space in the function hall at your wedding for this is a tad odd. When they arrived, they were chain smoking cigarettes and blowing them right where I was standing. I was tasked with handing the bridal party hors d'oeuvres while they had their pictures taken. The bride made a big fuss where I had to put her drink on a separate tray from the beers everyone else including the groom were ordering which meant I had to take separate trips inside to the bar for each order because I was on my own. This wasn't even including running back and forth replenishing all the food they were eating off of the plate I had to hold. So, I get this lady her separate drink on a separate tray, she takes it, watches her husband drink his beer full of gluten, and proceeds to make out with his beer soaked lips. She did not enter anaphylactic shock like she said she would if she even smelled gluten. The reception was awkward as well. No one was dancing. It was super light out which was just weird for me only because all the receptions I worked happened when it was dark out. She had her gluten free cake covered by plastic wrap sitting right next to the wedding cake in case it was contaminated by gluten in the air. And in the end she didn't even eat it. This was just one of many very weird weddings. But definitely one of the ones that I remember the most vividly. Frick that bride. Using a real disease as an excuse because she wants special treatment. It'd understand it if maybe one of her guests were allergic or had celiac disease but that's clearly not the situation. I was a banquet manager at a country club almost 20 years ago. Bride and groom have cut the cake and are on the dance floor for their first dance when the bride's grandfather falls dead out of his chair. CPR and paramedics to follow but no use. The freaking DJ to the rescue. DJ totally takes the mic. Shows us what the difference is between a DJ and a MC. While paramedics are loading granddad and the gurney, DJ gathers the wedding party and leads them in a group prayer. Also my bartender was freaking the frick out cause he thought he may have overserved the granddad. This would make a great comedy film. It wasn't so much a disaster, but I worked a wedding where a bridesmaid and the father of the bride went into a staff washroom and had sex. Yes, his wife was with him at the wedding, and only the staff knew what happened. This happened to me recently, the wedding party had a load of alcohol they have provided and as bartenders it was our responsibility to make sure all of this was used. So we kept replenishing bottles of wine that were empty on tables during the wedding breakfast. Everything was going fine, until one table just kept needing more bottles, and whilst on our break, during the wedding speeches, my friend comes out of the loose saying a woman had come storming in and the bathroom was literally flooding with puke. We go upstairs and there was puke everywhere, and the wedding party were just leaving the speeches and wanted to come down the stairs, so I had to clean up the sick whilst the bride was stood in front of me apologizing, and the toilets were completely flooded so nobody could use them, and it still smells of sick after 3 weeks. My mum says lemon spirit kills the smell of vomit. I had to help throw one of the groomsmen out of the rehearsal dinner a couple weeks ago. 
Turns out he had gone into the bathroom and shot up heroin. The groom's dad found him naked in the stall beating on the wall. It took us an hour to get him out of the stall, through the restaurant kitchen, only way to avoid walking him through the dinner, and outside. I'm guessing he took his pants off to find a vein but I am not sure. For an hour he told us he was taking a crap as he shuffled around the stall acting like he was wiping his butt it was really bizarre. We did all this while hiding what was happening from the groom and bride. When we finally got him out of the bathroom the bride was also coming out of the ladies room. She saw him drenched in sweat and immediately broke down in tears. Another hour goes by outside while we wait for his mom to come pick him up. She gets there and we tell her to take him to rehab and make sure he doesn't show up to the wedding. The groom was crying the whole wedding it was terrible. That's soul crushing. If that was my mate it cut me up inside I wouldn't even know how to do the wedding. Was a waiter at a banquet hall to get through grad school. There were plenty of shit chow weddings. But there was one clear winner. Loser. First. The bride's mother told all of the staff to not come to the bride with any issues, but to the maid of honor, a totally normal and not uncommon request. She then continued on to tell us to not look at the bride or acknowledge her in any way or she'd complain to our boss. So big red flag. The couple was interracial, with the bride being South Asian and the groom being white. In whatever cultural tradition the bride's family was from. The last dance of the reception was significant, where the groom dances with the bride's entire family. From what I gathered, my apology is if this is a misinterpretation of your cultural tradition. However, the groom missed the dance because he was up drinking in the bridal suite of the hall with two of the bridesmaids. The bride had a fit and a public screaming match with the groom about how he disrespected her and how could he and her family hated him, etc. He shrugs it all off, mostly because he's drunk by now and is like whatever, I don't care, and walks away with the best man. The bride now sits down in the hall and begins to sob. My boss calmly lets her know her hall rental has ended, and she needs to leave. She screams that she's not going anywhere until the groom comes back in to apologize. The groom, on the other hand, is out with the best man smoking a joint on the front curb. My boss has officially had it with this wedding and calls one of his buddies in the local police department and tells him to both help him remove the bride and freak out the groom. Sure enough, the groom throws away the J the second he sees the cop and turns white as a sheet, and once the cop threatens to charge the bride with trespassing, she was happy to leave. All in all, we were there an extra hour trying to get these buttholes to leave. A few friends and I used to play in a wedding band on the side for extra money. During normal operating hours, this same group of friends and I were in a metalcore band. Anyway, we're hired for a shotgun wedding in a small hick town. The bridesmaids and groomsmen wore camouflage as part of their outfits. The bride's dress had light camo as well. In a hoe, bride gave us a list of crappy pop country songs to cover. So, wedding is done and we're playing the reception. One of the songs she requested was Jason Aldean's song The Best Of Me which I thought was weird, considering it's clearly a breakup song. I guess it never dawned on her that it was a breakup song when her and her father were dancing to it. She waved her arms at me to stop singing. I didn't lol, and demanded that I play the song. She wanted. I showed her the set list to prove it to her, and she proceeded to sit on the ground and scream cry while telling everyone her wedding was ruined because of a breakup song she picked. Not soon after, she ran behind the stage and unplugged the bass player's amp and stormed off. We played the rest of our set to a fairly receptive crowd, said our goodbyes and went home. The next morning, she called demanding a full refund because we didn't play the music she wanted. Luckily, we signed a contract and ended up winning that argument. I'm pretty sure that was the last wedding I ever played. Maybe she was asking for best of you by Foo Fighters, which is also a weird choice. Obligatory not disastrous. But I worked for about a year at a cute 19th century greenhouse that had been converted into an events venue, and there was one really weird one. It's a fairly pricey place and booked up quick, so we didn't get a lot of last minute or casual weddings. This couple was a man probably in his mid-30s, normal American guy really, and a girl who looked just barely over 20 and spoke German maybe. It was super weird because it seemed like all the people at the wedding were only his family except for the bride's sister. We also didn't have a good place for brides to get ready, being a historic venue, so they almost always came with all their hair and makeup done. This girl, however, 
did her makeup herself in the kitchen and arrived only about 10 minutes before the ceremony was supposed to start. Super bizarre and definitely something up with that couple. I was a waiter for a wedding venue I worked at in my town. So during the dinner, we used two serving spoons like tongs to serve the main courses because we were fancy. As one of my colleagues was serving the father of the bride, they lost control of the spoons and dropped the slab of meat onto his lap. The sheer terror that came upon my face when I saw it happen. What followed was a fist fight and the cops being called. What a wedding. Those spoons are such a dumb way to serve food. Takes forever. High risk of spills. A nightmare for the staff and your food gets cold. I'm not sure if this is the kind of story that you are looking for, but it's the one that still sticks with me all these years later. I worked at a smallish resort that had a golf course, a shooting range, horseback riding, a few small bed and breakfasts, and several yachts and fishing boats. Very expensive. I was interning for the summer. It was supposed to be an accounting position. But I asked too many questions and they quickly moved me to the sales department. I got the chance to plan huge, expensive parties and tbh it was a lot of fun spending other people's money. At the end of the summer, I had to write a paper about my internship in order to get credit. While googling the company, I came across several lawsuits. They were repossessing the fleet because the owner had never made a single payment on any of the boats. The bank was attempting to repossess the boats and suing for a whole list of things. It was pretty clear that the business was about to go under in a big way. I naively assumed that everyone knew about it but hadn't told me because I was the intern and it was none of my business. My last day on the job, we did a walk throughout the property with a future bride and groom. And the bride's father. The father confides in me that he's been saving for her wedding since she was a baby so that when the time came he wouldn't have to deny her anything. I think I remember him saying that he was a plumber. The bride chose her venue, booked the mansion on the property for the bridal party, picked an expensive menu for her 200 plus guests, and much, much more. The father proudly wrote out the 50% deposits to hold the date for the following September. It was for just over $40k. As soon as they left, I demanded to know if they were really going to deposit that check knowing that the business wouldn't exist by next September if the bank had their way. My manager had no idea about the lawsuits, but she also didn't care. She fully intended to get her commission. The bank took the resort and sold it at auction the following December. The new owners refused to honor the wedding contract, and the old owners no longer had the money to refund the deposit that was put down. I don't know where or if the couple actually had their wedding, but I'm still bitter that they knowingly stole that man's life savings. This is not disastrous. It is sad. Really sad. I've had crappy brides, but as for actual disasters this was probably the biggest one. I was working as a pastry chef at a country club at one point. Our menu is set options, but we can obviously make adjustments for allergies, dietary restrictions, act. Thing is, bride wasn't the brightest, and didn't inform us that her future in-laws and husband's family kept kosher. She apparently assumed she could just tell us day off, everything that was made that day minus the deserts and vegetarian kids option, which was mac and cheese, had bacon, prosciutto, shellfish and one of the main swordfish. We had to scramble to make 100-ish servings of mac and cheese just so these people could eat something. When we informed her, she threw a fit and demanded we cook something else. We literally had no other way of doing other food for her, as sourcing food for 100 plus people within an hour is impossible. Even if we had the time to cook something, she then sat in her bridal suite and sobbed for an hour about how we were mean. Next morning, she called to ask for her takeaway food figuring she could just have the entrees that weren't served. She then threw a fit and threatened to sue for stealing when we told her that was illegal and we got rid of them. At my sister's wedding, the photographer was constantly snapping photos of me instead of the bride and groom. To be fair, he did get a lot of nice photos of them, but I felt positively stalked. I was stepping behind people when I saw the lens coming my way, and he'd circle around so he could see me again. He didn't provide those photos in the photo pack, which makes me really wonder what he did with them. He sold them. The one where you are looking at the bride and groom with your antelope eyes melts my legs. Not serious. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe.
I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.